Hello again and welcome back to The Daily Rundown with me, Dan Morfitt. Now they say in TV, never work with children or animals. Well, producer Emmy is young, but that's a bit harsh. I thought I'd put the animals bit to the test now though. With me on the Blue Bonquette is Andrew Grantham from Animals Intuition. Hello, good evening. Thank you for coming on the Blue Pond Care. Very welcome. Now, I understand that you go into schools and care homes and, and, and places really in the community yep. to teach you know, kids and adults what animals are, yep. what they do as part of our life and how to respect them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's quite important because there are a lot of misconceptions out there about certain animals. In particular, we've brought a snake tonight. That's probably one of the good examples where a lot of people think all well, snakes are going to bite you or kill you or eat you. Uh, particularly if you go into primary schools, there's a lot of children there who uh, who think they're really scary. Well, compared so, to a six-year-old, well, they're, he's, they're he's not big. a bad size. He's not particularly yeah. big, but he's, he's not a bad size. Um, but I think it's important to to let them know that actually nature is a fantastic thing. There are a lot of animals out there um, that we can appreciate and, and look at. The particularly beautiful pattern on the uh, royal python snake that we've got tonight, Mr. Tickle. Uh, he's about eight years old, uh, pretty much fully grown. Again, right. the misconception is pythons are huge, great snakes, but that's not the case for all the species. So uh, they are one of the smaller ones, but uh, particularly nice. So animals intuition go around the country and, and you take these into places. You, you've come on to the Daily Rundown tonight. Let's get Mr. Tickle out, because okay, he, cool. he is beautiful. Excellent. So as I said before, he's an eight year old royal python. Oh. He is fully grown. And I believe when his tongue is forking out like that, that's him smelling the air? Yeah, it, and tasting, yeah, tasting, smelling yeah. and tasting, so he's picking up the scents around him. Uh, do you want to have a, a little go? I'd love to, yeah, so I'd love to. I'm just going to so use him basically hands like a handle so there, hands and like he'll, a handle. Uh, he'll drape over there. Oh, he's really warm. Yeah, he's quite warm, I've got the heat you mats. Do uh, you think he's going to be cold-blooded? Well, the cold-blooded animals basically means they can't maintain their own body temperature, they can't control it. Uh -huh. So if he wants to be cool, he's got to go somewhere cool. If he wants to be warm, he's got to go somewhere warm. So it's important if you're out and about, you take some form of heating with you so that you know, he's got the option to be, to be cool or warm if he wants to. Oh, where, where would you find a, a, a royal python like Mr. Tickle? And I don't mean at your house, where would you yeah. find him in the wild? So in the wild, they're an African species, um, Central and Western Africa mainly. Um, they live in no. like savannah grassland uh -huh. areas. Um, they're quite a timid, shy snake, so they tend to, they are called ball pythons as well as royal pythons. So they tend to curl up in balls, that's one of their defensive measures, so you quite often see them in holes, uh, small burrows maybe that they've eaten a small animal from, or the animal's vacated, they'll move in, and uh, that's where they stay nice and, uh, nice and safe. And when you say you, you take these into schools and the kids are all like curious with them, yeah. what, what, what are they like around adults? Uh, absolutely brilliant. I say that the temperament on these snakes is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite often if I go to um, sort of bigger events uh, in the community, fates, fairs, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you'll quite often find the kids will be there, but the adults will be following quite yeah. closely after. Yeah, so they're all in oh. for a go. Oh, can I have a go? So I, you know, don't discriminate with age. You know, anybody's welcome to have a little go if they want to. I was just thinking as well that that new um, Jungle Book films out this week. Yes. So you're going to get lots of people. Well, with a bit of luck, yeah, they might uh, prompt uh, one or two. Uh, one or two jobs for me. Um, obviously, he's not called Car like the snake no. in Jungle Book. He's called Mr. Tickle, but I think it is a cracking name. So that's from my my son when he was a little bit younger. Um, his favourite Mr. Man was Mr. Tickle, and when he first held him, he was always oh, all tickly on my hands. I'd come and call him Mr. Tickle. So I'm, uh, I'm afraid, so Andrew, did. I might have to take him home tonight. I'm slightly in love with Mr. Tickle. I get loads of that. You he better is take him very, off very, very while popular. you can. He is gorgeous. He is fantastic. So and the, the pattern is actually unique as well. So they're a bit like a it's fingerprint, like a, like so a there's no other, no other snakes with, with that pattern on the back. And I'm guessing when you take them into schools and care homes, people can draw them and, and do... Yeah, yeah, so we do, um, we do a, like a learn and draw topic. So, you know, while we're maybe handling one of the animals, the other animals can be dotted on the tables at school and the children can observe and draw them, um, you know, <sighs> doing the correct number of legs and body parts and things like that. But he was lovely. He, Bye -bye, Mr. he Tickle. is amazing. He, if I had to pick a favourite, it would be Mr. Tickle, definitely. So, when you go out, I'm guessing you've got some big animals. I've heard that you once had a pony. That what used to go around within Kansas the business. Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to to keep the smaller animals now. Um, I just find it a bit easier to uh, to get out and about rather than sort of load trailers up and mm. things like that. So, and these are a lot easier to share in a classroom or at home. Absolutely, and pass and, around. And you yes. do um, like 
uh, corporate gigs and media gigs yeah, and do, stuff yes, like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, some, uh, some big work for some of the big companies and, and things. And they're quite often staged fun days in the summer. Mm. And we'll go down. There are free, obviously free event for all the employees. And uh, we go down and, and take the animals along. And well, let's have a look next at uh, one called Scooby Doo. Yeah. And he's a crested gecko. He is a very, very pretty lizard. So this. So in the wild, these are from uh, New Caledonia, and they live way up in the rainforest canopies and emergent layer, right up at the top. So 50 to 70 meters off the ground. Hello, They're what we call man. arboreal. So they spend most of their lives in the treetops. They don't actually come down from the trees. And he's a he's an unlike Mr. Tickle, who's mm. a, a carnivore. Uh, Scooby Doo here's an omnivore. So his Eat diet is going to be everything. fruits, berries, and small bugs and beetles as well. Oh, so he goes for superfoods. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, very healthy. Yeah, <laughs> at home he's uh, blueberries, kiwis, melon, pears, grapes. Uh, he likes a bit of baby food. Tomatoes are, are a favourite as well. He eats baby food. Yeah, a little bit sweet baby oh. foods. Yeah, he likes a little bit of baby food. Oh, um, important that you dust the crickets with a calcium powder though, because um, they can get sort of lots of bone problems if you don't uh, don't maintain the calcium in the diet. So they're a bit like bodybuilders, you know, with their proteins. <laughs> yeah, shakes, protein but, uh, shakes, yeah. So Scooby Doo. I, he's got like a, a tail here. That's, yep. Is he like a monkey? It is, yeah. So what they call a semi-prehensile tail. So he can grip and hold it on to help him move around in the treetops. As well as that, he's got thousands and thousands of tiny hairs on his toes, which can find small imperfections on pretty much any oh. surface, which means he is like those geckos you can see maybe climbing up walls and things like that. He, he's like a very cute sticky thing. But it's it not, feels sticky, yeah, it's but it's not the hairs sticky, you can it's feel. It's nice sticky. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so tremendous climbers. On, the crested Doo. gecko comes from the, the row of spikes, which are quite a soft spike. They're not, uh, they're not terribly tough over his eyes. And if you look at his eyes closely, he looks so he's got big long eyelashes. So it makes him look quite pretty. Very lovely looking. So I'm guessing when kids see geckos like this, they think he's a little dinosaur, don't they? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's you, quite prehistoric. You can educate yes. them. Yeah, yeah. About but um, the other interesting, when we do sort of rainforest in schools to educate the children, um, they're actually, um, until 1994, I think, they were thought to be extinct. Um, and they were, they were rediscovered in 1994, brought back to Europe and America for breeding programs. So in captive wise, they're quite a popular pet now. The numbers are quite good. In the wild, I think they're still struggling a little bit. And they're OK to keep as pets? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, it's like anything. You've got to do your research. If you, I think they make great pets. I love them to bits. Um, but you've got to do your research. You've got to, got to be able to give them the right kind of habitat, the right kind of diet, mm -hmm. um, the right kind of temperature, uh, humidity, if that's appropriate. So you've got to look at all the things they need to stay nice and healthy. And, and you've got kids at home. I have, um, yes. Yeah. So they're great with these things. They, they are very good, yes. Them. Yeah, yeah. The um, little boy, he's, he's not so great with crowds, so perhaps doesn't like coming out, but he, he, he does love the animals. My daughter, she comes out and helps me with parties and things like that occasionally. So, uh, although she's approaching teenage Ooh. years now, so. He just licked his eye. Oh, did you see but, it? Yeah, well, excellent. He's got quite a human like tongue. Well, I, I quite like that when you go into schools. That's a great one for the kids to see. Because when you tell them they can't close their eyes, and you get them to imagine having some dust oh. or dirt in their eye, what would you do? And they'd say, well, yeah, we'd blink. Well, Scooby Doo can't do that. So, how does he keep his eyes clean? You get them all guessing. So, he washes them with water, or and he, he, he uses the rain and things like that. And then. We see him lick his eyes. That's fantastic. He's on the move now. He is. Earlier on, when we had him in the office, he jumped all on me. Oh, we did, yes. Fantastic. Yeah, they can, they can jump I'll as well. Let, I'll let you take him off me for now. Oh, bye bye, Scooby. Fantastic. Dude. Absolutely cute. So, yes, yeah, probably a couple of my favourites there. And it must be nice just sharing your knowledge and your enthusiasm and your love for these things, but yep. also educating people about it as well. I and think not so, to yeah. be scared. Now, yep. this, this last one that we're going to see, Marge. Marge, yeah. Um, lots of people might be scared of this, but there's no reason to be, is it? Yeah, I mean, she does come under the creepy crawly banner, I think, okay. for a lot of people. Um, she's a giant African millipede. Um, I think they're amazing creatures. Um, and as I, I did mention to you before, actually, that they have been around on the planet for pretty much longer than most other land animals. So these One are of the very dinosaurs. Very, yeah, yeah, about 200 million years before the dinosaurs. So they found fossils dating back to about 420, 30 million years ago. Um, not changed very much no. in all that time, apart no. from the size, they were a bit bigger back then. Uh, <laughs> when you say the a bit bigger, how much bigger? Uh, you're probably looking dog? at maybe a couple of metres long. 
Um, Two meters. So being cold blooded, so, they get their energy to grow from the, the heat of the surroundings. Let's, so, uh, what's the best to do with this? Because it's not the snake, but oh, oh, so that's a little bit like Velcro. Amazing. You might feel a little bit of a grip every now and again. That's actually really quite relaxing. It's when it's she gets like moving, it's like a, a mini massage. massage. Yeah, it's a mini massage. That's what I call it. And I'm guessing if this is Marge, there's a homer. Yes, yeah, he's at home tonight. He's having a rest day. So do they uh, like to be together? Are They, they do. Um, like you wouldn't keep one on their own, generally speaking. They're um, really good to keep together, two or more. Uh, some people keep quite a number um, and breed them. But uh, yeah, they do get quite lonely, actually. I did have a, an, an old pair. Um, one of them passed away, unfortunately, and the other one did, did pine. It, pine. Was, it was very lonely, yeah. So what all of so, that shows as well is that we, we look at these animals sometimes with fear with the snakes and sometimes with wonder with the geckos and this, which is just a lot more beautiful than you'd ever imagine. I, I think so. But One of my dad's favourites as well. These. They're a lot more human than you I give think so. credit I mean, for. You know, they're, a, they're a very basic animal. Um, basic eyes can only really detect light and dark, but they have got the antennae. Um, Usually around, around about 300 legs, probably between 250 and 350 on average. Um, but a slow-moving animal. But what we call a detritivore as well, which is was quite cool. So they tend to eat rotten waste vegetation. So these so clear the floor of the clear the, the floor of the, uh, the the waste matter. And then when they when they go to the toilet, um, they actually put nutrients back in the soil. So if you've got a compost heap, I always say to the kids, if you've got a compost heap at home, if you recycle your waste stuff, you're going to find millipedes and worms in there. Well, turning the waste stuff into uh, compost. Well, I want to take all these animals home. If anybody wants to find out about animal intuition, uh, we'll put your Twitter on the screen. It's an Animals In. Yes. Uh, and you go around everywhere, so you do parties and events, but mainly schools yeah. and colleges. Primary schools are the main mainstay. Did oh, you feel that? It's like Velcro, lovely, isn't yeah. it, when it comes off? Um, so primary schools are, are my main uh, thing that I do. But yeah, birthday parties, um, events, care homes, they're always quite lovely, quite rewarding to go in there. Wow. Um, and I think it's just teaching people that actually nature is a fantastic thing. There are some amazing creatures and they're not all going to bite you or eat you. That's like having, <laughs> you know, like a David Attenborough documentary, but here in the studio, that was Excellent. lovely. Absolutely. Andrew, thank you so much for coming in. I'm glad you've enjoyed God, it. You're going to have to come in again. You really are. That would be my pleasure, yeah. And it's uh, been super. I know that when we were asking you to come in, I said, no spiders, please. You know what? I'd go for spiders next time. Yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can bring Charlotte in, named after Charlotte's Web. Oh, Fantastic children's I want to be Wilbur but... the pig. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Oh. So, yeah, we can bring Charlotte in if you want to oh. have me back. That would be absolutely fantastic. Andrew from Animals Intuition, thank you so much for coming no, in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Laws and Jack will return with their something to say. Sadly, they won't be bringing Mr. Tickle with them, but please come back in three minutes' time. <laughs>